In this video, we're going to continue with the tip clock and we're going to make the pendulum. I'm starting out here with some sheet brass and we're going to make the top and bottom strip for the upper section of the pendulum. The bottom section of the pendulum piece is slotted to accept the compensator and this was slotted 8mm. The top section of the pendulum is produced using two 6mm rods of Invar. These were simply turned to size and they were threaded at the top and bottom to accept the brass strips. And with those parts finally constructed, it was a chance to assemble the top section of the pendulum piece. I then moved on to making the brass compensator piece and Steve's new design has an extended threaded section which I went with 8 millimeters. The compensator piece is drilled all the way through which is quite a length uh, and then tapped just in the top section and this accepts then the lower pendulum rod. The bottom end of the pendulum rod was turned to a fine point and it was quite a length to fit in the lathe with a lot overhanging. And then the both ends were threaded M3 as you can see here. Alright, well we're going to try and uh, cut the taper on the end of the uh, pendulum bob. So we've got this nice piece of uh, hex that I've, again has just been randomly sitting there for a long period of time, many years. Um, so we're going to try and cut this nice little taper on it. A bit nervous about this. Okay, so that's the sort of finish we've got on the end. So we've just got to try and replicate that now on the other side. The pendulum bob itself is threaded M3, and even though it would be lovely to thread the entire section, that was just impossible for my smaller threads. Therefore, it was partially drilled and partially threaded to accept the lower half of the pendulum rod. Okay, so we're onto the suspension spring now, and whilst I made one for the tower clock, um, in actual fact, I'm going to go with uh, Tkip's idea of using the Kundo suspension spring. There must be a reason why he chose to use that rather than make his own when they are essentially quite simple to to make. So um, the only problem with this commercial one is it's got a hole in the bottom, which is great, oops, but it's got a pin in the top. So we're just going to have a little look at this and gently tap it and see if we can knock that spring out or uh, see if we have to mill or drill that out. So let's have a go at trying to tap this out first of all. Ah, oh, it's going. I can feel it. Yep, it's going out. Okay, well I'm just going to go off camera now because this is going to start. I'm going to have to uh, start getting my hands in the way and try and tap this all the way out, uh, and then I'll uh, open the hole out. Well, this has been more difficult than I expected. I've uh, broached out one of the holes to three millimeters. Uh, I've just left enough material on that edge. And then I'm uh, trying to broach the second one out as well. This is nearer the top edge. Okay, so that's the uh, part now with the holes enlarged three millimeters. I could have gone slightly smaller and used a BA uh, size, but I wanted to stick with metric and I know I'll get a good uh, clamp on there as well with. I'm always a bit wary with uh, 8BA, I've, I've had some strip before when you're trying to apply a little bit of pressure to clamp these together, so I thought 3BA would be a better fit. And I've just used them with the, the broach sets, just gone sequentially up, and I've also left them in their original hole positions, which again is why, you know, in theory that one would be down a little more towards centre and that one would be a little bit higher, so I've actually just enlarged their original hole positions. Okay, so we're onto the suspension mounts now, and I've just got turned these two little 10 millimeter rounds up 
So 10 millimeter round, um, about 18 millimeters long, M6 bolt at the top. And we now need to slot these for the suspension spring. And also we need to uh, drill through cross drill uh, and tap one side so that we can clamp up on that. So we're gonna hold it in this little ER32 square uh, collet block. Got the slit in, so I need to mount that to the mill and then we'll get going. So I heard the RPM's way, way too high. Um, I just hope I've not killed the cutter. Taking it a lot slower now. Slightly deeper feeds, but a lot slower. The suspension spring mounts were tapped M3 and you'll see in a moment why I'm pleased I went with this rather than the ABA. Okay, so we've completed the parts for the uh, pendulum. We've got the compensator piece and the top section to the pendulum. And then we've got the pendulum bob itself and then the bit that was the, definitely the hardest, um, we've got the suspension spring. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I cut those about 0.2 of a millimeter uh, above the thickness of the actual uh, brass spring itself. Um, and the M3, the holding and it's absolutely fine, but they have to be very tight to uh, clamp down. But I, I have got enough force on there, they're definitely, definitely not gonna move. Um, but it's gonna just done with uh, having a little bit less. It, basically, if I'm gonna put these in position, I'm gonna have to fit them in position like this and take them off the clock because undoing them on the clock, it just twist everything by trying to get them tight enough on the clock, I, I expect. Uh, but they're looking, looking pretty good as well. So uh, we're gonna try and put all this together. The, these are the two uh, nuts that go on the bottom of the rod and I appreciate actually looking at the plans again. They should be a lot thicker hex. Uh, and this was my only piece, uh, didn't have any spur, so I'm um, probably gonna have to make these again at some point. Now, I'd love to get a piece of wood and hopefully tomorrow I'm gonna get a piece of wood to make a little backing board and then we can have a temporary setup. But right now I'm just gonna dangle this off the edge of my bench and just try and set it up so we can see it working. So there's the pendulum all together. Sorry about the messy background. Seems to be working quite well. The only uh, bit I'm missing is the little uh, weight dish, which I've just totally forgot to make until this point now. So I'll do that uh, next and put that to one side. Simple bit to. So I think we're going to move uh, onto the wheels next. The skate wheel, perhaps, uh, but maybe even one of the larger wheels. I'm worried about doing those so I'd like to get some of those done and out of the way and then I know that uh, I can successfully do those and carry on with the plot. So it might be a little bit of a delay now between the next video if that's the way I decide to go. Have a think about it over the next day or so. So I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching.